here are the top 13 crypto marketing tips you can do now from yashaharari.com details keep watching hi and welcome to another episode of crypto marketing insights with me yasha harari so today we're going to talk about the top 13 crypto marketing tips these are really pro crypto marketing tips that anyone can use if you're marketing any kind of crypto or blockchain project um, however uh, you may not be aware of all of these 13 tips and that's pretty much why i'm going over them to make sure that you don't leave any stone unturned when you are trying to get results for your marketing campaigns in the crypto ecosystem. So let's dive right in, shall we? The uh, very first thing you should do, of course, is if you're marketing, actively marketing a crypto or blockchain project, make sure, just like with any other project, um, that you post your videos um, to the relevant platforms and those include of course YouTube and Facebook LinkedIn Instagram Pinterest I mean pretty much everyone you know snapchat every every social network and um, Video network has uh, video hosting obviously video is the main form of content So you should be posting videos obviously if you're marketing something with crypto and you should be using all of those centralized platforms Yes, I know um, and at the same time Right? At least, if for no, for no other reason than to make a token show of it, um, you should automatically at least sync your last thousand videos, which is you know, easy and free to do with a few clicks, to lbry.tv um, or DTube. Um, you should sync your, you know, put some videos up there um, or stream, you know, simultaneously stream on DLive when you stream on YouTube uh, or any other channel that you stream on Facebook or wherever you do it uh, the reason for that is yes the eyeballs are not on the decentralized platforms but the longer um, you wait to do it the you know longer it will take you to grow your audience there right there are people on the decentralized platforms they are looking for content so if you make it for them well you're probably likely to do pretty well in a tiny market so take advantage of it while it's still very nascent and you can be literally one of the video marketing pioneers in the decentralized space, right? I mean, we are, right? <laughs> and, and we market a, a bunch of projects in crypto, and they all do very well with their videos. Uh, and you have for sure seen them, whether you realize it or not. If you're looking for videos on crypto, I guarantee you've seen videos that we market. Um, um, <clears throat> okay. No. Number 12, price trackers. Now, price trackers are very, very convenient um, ways of looking at the price action of your various cryptos. That matters to you as a marketer, um, only in the sense of how price affects marketing. 
right? Um, it's not, you shouldn't be dependent on it like a day trader, but you definitely should have an eye on it occasionally, you know, maybe weekly, right? Or monthly or whatever, just to know what's going on in the markets roughly with your crypto. Um, I mean, obviously you should know daily, but um, the actual price action, you don't need to be a charting expert if you're a marketer. You can leave that to the traders or whoever else needs to do quant stuff on the price action. You know, you need to focus on other KPIs, but it's good to know what's going on in the charts. So use sites like, you know, TradingView or Coinigy or, you know, use other kind of charting tools. You might want some that are uh, offline. Um, you know, absolutely. That's one of the main easy ways to keep an eye on the market that you're marketing to and to see, you know, what is the current sentiment, what's the current direction and trends. Uh, again, you don't have to be a genius to look at it. Just zoom out, <laughs> look at it on a monthly basis or in a weekly, you know, weekly time frame, and it'll give you a really good sense of what's going on. Are we going up, down, or sideways, right? <laughs> it's pretty easy. Uh, and that should give you a clear indication as to what immediate actions you can take that can affect your immediate marketing results much more than the longer term ones. Because again, the market leads the news. So you as a marketer can take advantage of that by knowing what's going on in the market, right? And that's your job as a marketer is to make things get to the market. So do that. Um, okay. Number 11. ICO and IEO trackers. Um, ICO and IEO trackers are very useful tools for, uh, well, tracking the action, uh, what's on deck, what's currently in, you know, new in the market, and what has just expired from the action um, in, ter in terms of ICOs and IEOs. Now, I know it's 2020, and a lot of people in crypto are cringing when I say ICO, but uh, you may very well be a marketer who is marketing an ICO. Right? Those things have not gone away entirely. And also, IEOs are basically the new version right, of IEOs, they're, of ICOs. They're basically, you know, uh, the exchange's version of an ICO. So that way it kind of reassures the investor or trader a little bit more, maybe, in theory. At least that's the theory with the bigger exchanges like Binance, where they're saying, you know, invest in our IEO or in the IEOs we back because... Then you can be assured that we, you know, back it, and your funds are safe, right? as CZ likes to say. Um, so you know, but the point of those trackers is, that as a marketer, you can easily see what kind of action is happening on any given day or week or month in terms of that uh, sphere, and you should be aware of that because those are great places for you to promote your own ICO or IEO if you're doing one or to look out for competitors to make sure you're not um, essentially muddying the waters and diluting your own effect, right? Because there's nothing wrong with competitors, it means a healthy growing marketplace. But if two companies that do pretty much the exact same thing come out with the exact same news on the exact same day, or even the same few days or week, um, that can muddy the waters and make it not clear that there's two companies doing that and people can get confused and eventually what happens is rather than try to figure it out they just say ah forget that next thing so you want to have your own time and space and one of the easiest ways to do that is to keep track of all the other ICOs and IEOs going on in this space um, and make sure that your big release doesn't interfere with anything like that whatever your big release might be right as a marketer um, okay next Number 10, exchanges, right? Crypto exchanges, doesn't matter if you're just buying and holding on a spot exchange like Coinbase or Binance, or if you're using leverage on something like uh, whatever it is, you know, I think Kraken or uh, I think this Coinbase Pro, anyway, um, like BitMEX or Deribit or uh, Bybit or, you know, if you're using something more professional like uh, Evolve Markets, uh, or, uh, you know, with MetaTrader 5, um, then by all means, uh, you know, those, those are the exchanges. Those are the exchanges that you can uh, 
be marketing on if you have a crypto or blockchain project that's ready to go onto an exchange. Those are the bigger ones. Um, in order to be on the biggest ones, you need to have significant market cap and you need to be, have enough momentum to go forward. You can't just have a project with just, you know, terrible promises. I mean, you know, yeah, you could <laughs> uh, and, and, and still get on some of the bigger ones, right? Like Binance, <laughs> they like to, uh, you know, they're the altcoin carousel or whatever. Uh, but if you have a small project, maybe you're bootstrapping it, maybe you have a small amount of funding, whatever it is you have, um, maybe doing a crowd sale, maybe doing whatever you're doing, um, getting it out onto exchanges when it's ready for a release on an exchange, according to your plan, um, can be done on a lot of decentralized exchanges, for example, really easily, I mean, relatively, right, compared to certain of the bigger ones. Uh, a lot of them literally let you add your own coin, uh, but some of them invite you, some of them charge a fee and some of them don't, or some of them ask for a fee and some of them don't. Um, some of them offer decent promotional, you know, messaging to their audience of followers on Telegram and Twitter and their other social, social channels where they want to hear updates about that kind of thing. So it's like a legitimate, you know, they're not spamming anyone, right? They're sending messages to their subscribers and their audience. Um, a lot of them are based in Asia, right? Because that's where or at least their audiences are based in Asia because they do a lot of trading out there on IEOs. They really, they like that stuff. Um, look out to make sure you are using the good ones only. That There's a decent amount of liquidity for the kind of coin you're marketing, right? Don't put yourself on an illiquid market that will only harm your reputation and you know, possibly do bad things to your price action over time and mess with your charts, you know, in, instead of having them grow in a natural way or whatever, it'll be not well developed uh, and you certainly don't want to open yourself up to too much exposure to things like whales and bots and algos that do a lot of wash trading on the smaller exchanges right so you want to limit your exposure in a way if you're concerned about um, unnatural price action affecting your reputation right so uh, to keep a clean reputation in marketing which is obviously absolutely critical um, you could just go ahead and, uh, you know, selectively list rather than trying to list on every exchange under the sun. Just selectively list, right? That's the way to do it. That way you don't have any uh, overexposure. Anyway, so, okay. Number nine, communities, right? Um, communities are very important in crypto and the blockchain ecosystem because, well, that's how it was built, right? It is a community-based movement. Sure, certain communities are more open than others. Certain communities are more decentralized than others. Certain communities are more censorship resistant than others. But they're all communities. Right? And they're all trying to build bigger communities in order to have a bigger effect for wider use and more mass adoption. Right? And really, when it comes to mass adoption, um, that's what communities can help you develop. Right? Because they're the, the early ones, the early stage adopters. They're the most eager, and they'll tell everyone and their mother about it. Um, and then as the cycle gets more mature, you have people who are maybe less and less cheerleaders, but they're more and more of the masses. So you need those early cheerleaders. You need the core group for whatever project you're running. You need at least a small handful group of like super fans, and they're gonna love everything you do and talk about what you do with everyone and share what you're doing. You know, obviously the good things you're doing with everyone. Hopefully you're doing good things. Um, and then they will always be essentially your super group. So treat them special or whatever, you know, give them bonus points, uh, loyalty rewards, all kinds of things you can give people who are, you know, you can incentivize to perform better with your blockchain project built around the communities that they involve themselves with and engage with. You know, the more they post about you know, some code that's relevant to your blockchain, 
the more whatevers they get, emoticons or points or maybe actual crypto. Um, you know, the more they, maybe they make art, maybe they make memes for you, maybe they make uh, videos, maybe they do marketing for you, you know, uh, link building, outreach, uh, content, guest blogging, um, all that stuff. Communities are the heart and soul of crypto, right, and blockchain. Without them, there will not be any forward progress except by the banks who want their own versions of this stuff and to shove it down everyone's throat whether they like it or not. So the community is really the only way this can grow and avoid ultimately being um, completely controlled by the largest financial institution, which pretty much already control it anyway. But if you're a dreamer and you're building something that's still outside of that bell curve, uh, then you have to develop a strong community to stay independent and free and do all the things you want to do, you know, revolutionary or not, right? Uh, but certainly, hopefully, disruptive in a positive sense. Uh, so. Number eight, uh, crypto job boards. Crypto job boards are a very easy and practical way to get the word out about your company, to tell people, especially specifically developers and marketers and legal people and accounting people and all the you know all the product people and everybody else, designer people, all the folks you need to build your project and get it out there. Whatever it is you need for your particular project, right? And every project has its own unique needs. But crypto job boards are a very easy way to network, right? To find talent and uh, to get the word out that you're looking to hire people, right? And which means you're growing, right? So if you have a growth company, you're probably hiring, which means you should take advantage of the crypto job boards, maybe even advertise on them, right? Like on LinkedIn or Reddit or wherever, uh, wherever ads are seen in a YouTube video, you know, sponsor some videos, etc. cetera, uh, that you're hiring, right? sponsor whatever Ivan on Tech's Academy or I don't even know if he does that but you know <laughs> find YouTubers that take sponsorships for their uh, courses for their academic courses and sponsor those um, you can definitely find places to post crypto jobs on various crypto job boards right consider that even during the bear market of 2018 um, blockchain job demand grew 10x and in 2019, it grew more than that. Like it grew, you know, on top of that, I think another two or three X in 2019 during a half the year was a bull market and the other half was going down. So uh, there is job demand, right, in this space. It, and it's also considered like, if not the hottest, one of the hottest you know, jobs for the future, um, like paying now already. So if you're a blockchain developer or any other kind of thing with blockchain, um, and, you know, looking for work, right? This is a great time, right? So as a marketer of these projects, this is an opportune time to find really good talent that's willing to move. A lot of it is, you know, right up your alley in terms of uh, skills, uh, experience, uh, you know, vision, know-how, get that whole thing, right? The, the ability to, you know, get something done, um, the problem with blockchain projects very often with hiring people is that once you've been moneyed, right, once your project has been moneyed to the point where it can essentially focus on development only, um, very often people just get kind of comfortable and you see development slow down. And you see like one feature a year or, you know, feature every six months or at best or something like that. Whereas the startups that haven't been funded yet, you know, they're pushing out 10, 20, 30, 100 features a year because they want to make a difference, right? They're pushing, they're hungry. They still haven't been funded. They still have to prove themselves. So if you're in a position where you still have to prove your project, be hungry. Even if you get money suddenly, stay hungry, right? And use that and reflect that in the postings you make on the crypto job boards. That will be the culture you inculcate. Those will be the people you hire and that will drive your company to much greater heights than the sum of the parts of just hiring random people who have Skills you can chuck mark, but they don't have that hunger. That's very important. I can't stress that enough. So do that. Um, number seven, wallets, crypto wallets, right? Blockchain wallets. 
Uh, everybody has one. If you don't have one, well, you should, if you're in crypto. Uh, at least you should have a brain wallet, which is you just remember your recovery phrase. But of course, if you have a lot of different wallets for a lot of different cryptos, um, that can be quite not so easy, right? Try to remember 12 to 36 random words for every single kind of crypto you have. Uh, for some people, they might not have, you know, you might not have a mnemonic enough memory or a photographic enough memory to do that with. And it might not be the best thing to practice on, right? So... If that's the case, if you're like the other 99% of people, well, then the best thing to do is at least have a paper wallet, right? Which can be quite complex, but it is extremely secure if you secure it properly. And the next best thing is really a hardware wallet, something like Ledger or Trezor uh, or Ecomai or Coldlar or KeepKey. All these different kinds of hardware wallets, which is a physical device, usually not ever connected to the internet, and it's just, you know, only connected to the blockchain when you plug it in and disconnected from the blockchain the moment you plug it out and it's just literally a key to your wallets or your different cryptos. Those are the easiest ones on to get with hardware that are very reliable. People like hardware wallets because they're in theory harder to hack than a software wallet which is like on your mobile device. But there are some extremely secure and blazingly fast software wallets for mobile and laptop and desktop starting with Bitcoin's own Bitcoin Core wallet, right? Like if you're a Bitcoin node, you're running a software wallet, right? So software wallets are secure. You shouldn't be just unnecessarily panicky about them. And definitely you should use them. Uh, and for marketing purposes, wallets like, uh, well, the Bitcoin Core wallet is, you know, is was very popular, uh, but is gaining less popularity as other wallets come on the market. And that's because there's no one marketing Bitcoin, right? In the sense of there's no marketing department at Bitcoin. Uh, but there are other software wallets like the Exodus wallet, which is great for, you know, managing a bunch of different cryptos. Uh, it's got a, you know, a decent number and a nice interface. Uh, or the Daedalus wallet, for example, which is like very specific to Cardano. If you're into Cardano, um, people like that. Uh, XRP has its own wallet, just called Toast, you know, and it has a couple others that people make um, that are compatible with XRP. I think you could put XRP on a ledger now already since some time. In fact, I know you can. Um, you know, so different cryptos will even have their own, like Ethlite crypto, a crypto that I market, it has its own wallet. It's incredibly fast and super light and you know i could i could rave it for it a long time but i won't right now if you want to you can watch the f light crypto review uh, what do you call it uh video that i have in my playlist you can click on that or there's a hopefully there's a button popping up above now in this video and you can click on that to watch that f light uh wallet review video um if not click on the link in the description below uh, but yeah, there are wallets that are blazingly fast on software, on your phone, on your laptop or PC that keep your crypto very secure as long as you actually keep it secure, right? If you let people hack into your device, well, then you know, there's a good chance they can copy your uh, finger taps or whatever you're doing, the keystrokes, and hack your wallets because you left them open, right? But if you keep them secure... Not a problem. So as a marketer, again, not to veer off too far, but as a marketer, wallets are important because you can partner with a lot of wallets that are trying to add, you know, currencies to their wallets to make them more attractive. So it's an opportunity for you, if you have a coin on the market, to push um, partnerships, essentially, not even partnerships, just get your coin listed in the wallets, right? There's Electrum, there's, you know, there's no shortage of wallets um, out there. They don't all have many coins being able to be hosted, you know, like, uh, like, you know, you could maybe get listed on MetaMask, you could get, you know, you could have it work with MetaMask, for example, uh, or an Electrum, you could have it work with, uh, again, the F-Lite wallet that has all the ERC-20 tokens, you could add it to there, the uh, Exodus wallet, um, you know, probably you could open a wallet, uh, a wallet uh, a listing for your crypto on there as well, if you had a partnership with them, or an agreement or something. Um, there's many ways to get your coin out into the different wallets and therefore make them, you know, more useful. Like put in the Bancor wallet, right? Maybe you'll be one of the coins that list. And, and then by doing that, you know, you get more eyeballs to see your currency, which is, of course, one of the main functions currently of cryptocurrency is the 
trading of it and the storing of it in wallets. And many of these wallets more and more have some kind of exchange functionality. So, uh, and soon there'll be, you know, many more of them will, and many exchanges will add, you know, wallet functionalities that um, resemble your own wallet. But of course, not your keys, not your crypto. So if you're keeping it on, on an actual exchange and not exchanging via your wallet where you control the keys, those are very different things. But again, as a marketer, you can use both of these platforms as opportunities to list your coins and get them into the hands of more traders and more hodlers, which is ultimately, you know, one of the key core adapter uh, adopter user bases that you should be going for. Um, so yeah, there you go, wallets. Um, okay. Six, altfolios. Altfolios are uh, sites like uh, blockchain info or blockfolio uh, or crown trading. Now has a crown trading app uh, where you can track, you know, your trading. You can track your crypto. Uh, you can track prices across key markets. You can track all kinds of different things um, that are relevant to your crypto activity. Uh, and all in one place, right? That's the idea of alt folios. Um, definitely check them out if you're not familiar with them. And as a marketer, realize that again, some of these apps, uh, you know, not the ones I think I mentioned, but others, <laughs> some of them are open to partnerships with uh, advertisers and sponsors, right? Or they're also willing to highlight sponsors or advertisers. So uh, if you are somehow listed in their portfolio manager uh, as some kind of, you know, one of the cryptos on their list, one of the top cryptos on their list, maybe they feature you by highlighting your crypto icon, whatever it is. Uh, there are different ways you as a marketer can be listed in all folios to your great advantage. And it is one of the easiest growth hacks you can do if, again, you just hook up the right partnership with the right folio company um, and you can get exposed to a significant number of people trading crypto, right? Or holding it at least and managing a portfolio of it. And if you think about it, the people managing portfolios um, and not just people buying and stuffing into a wallet and forgetting about it, but the people actively managing their portfolios are the people who are more likely to spend money actively on things in crypto because, well, they're actively managing a portfolio. Right. So key target demographic right there. Very juicy. Crosses over a couple of your demographic choices for sure. And, um, you know, unless you're doing something that for some reason does not require people actively managing their crypto. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a very effective demographic to go for for a lot of different user cases, use cases in marketing crypto. five useful crypto tools so there's a lot of useful crypto tools um, i publish a bunch uh, many others do as well uh, you can definitely take a look at some of the um, you know spreadsheets we put online that list different kinds of categories of uh, sites you could be posting things on if you're into crypto or the different kinds of uh, metrics you can be doing specifically for crypto by using you know, blockchain information, blockchain explorers, ETH explorer, things like that. Those tools are very useful for finding out information about the activity on the blockchain and uh, doing all kinds of other forensic information if you're doing quant stuff. But as a marketer, it's also useful to get a sense of what goes on on the blockchain, literally, and how does it look and how, you know, how can you affect positively your marketing with that knowledge what can you learn from that and how can you put that to good use maybe it's come up with a report based on that information that's relevant to your crypto maybe it's make a prettier version of the ux of the crypto you know explorer that is more attractive and more user friendly maybe it's um you know include marketing messaging on some of the existing blockchain explorers out there um, where you can expose your message, right? There, are, Some of them are open to that. Uh, so again, these are big marketing opportunities for you that you can use um, in crypto without having to break the bank 
and at the same time putting your marketing budget to good use right and getting good results because you're targeting very key demographics of people who are looking up blockchain information about specific transactions so you if you have a business that's related to that if you're doing quant analytics and you're you guys are soft you know selling analytics tools uh, for crypto that is a very useful demographic for you to go after right the actual crypto tools space and the tools websites <music>
guess where you want to get the word out about the exciting developments of your crypto, the technical developments on those sites, right? So you want to have active profiles, active users, whatever you want to call it, active, active accounts on those sites. Uh, and if you're not already updating, you know, sharing your repository of code up there, well, you probably should have something there, right? Um, and as a marketer, you should make sure that you have some kind of engagement with, a, you know, there should be a profile at least, if it's not a developer's profile, somebody else's profile who actually engages with the community on those sites, right? Beyond just the actual scope of, the, of your internal dev, right? Engage in other ways, find other curiosities that allow you to partner up your crypto with someone else's crypto development project, whether it's an app they're developing that can be used on your crypto as well as someone else's, or whether it's, uh, you know, an actual other crypto that you could do some kind of collaboration with, or some other kind of blockchain project that you can do a collaboration with. You know, there is no shortage of things you can share, learn from, and gain by participating in developer communities in the, in the blockchain space, because that's who's building this, right? I mean, if you don't speak to the architects and builders, well, then what exactly are you hoping to achieve with your marketing? Because we're in such a new space, the developers are still a core part of this community. Right? They're not yet um, people that no one knows about at all. Right? It's not where we haven't reached the maturity of the market where there's a couple hundred thousand developers and two billion users who have no idea about development. Right. But that's what it will be. Right? Maybe a couple million developers, but billions of users who don't know how to develop anything, as it will be. So get in front of the developer communities. Do it early. Do it fast. Do it often. You know, be active on those communities because they are the leading minds, literally building this stuff. Without them, there is no forward progress. Without them, there is no additional progress. Right? There's nobody else coming on board saying, "Hey, I want more crypto." If all the developers shut off all the cryptos, well, we know we can't do. It. But I'm saying, if all the developers shut off all the code on all the crypto that they could shut off those projects would all die, right? <laughs> without the developers, there ain't no forward progress, right? Try, you know, try heart surgery without a heart surgeon, right? Not exactly uh, a feat you want to do. Okay, so. Number three, podcasts and video casts. Um, podcasts and video casts in the crypto space are super popular and very practical as a way to get your message out. I think it's well known. If you look at a lot of the different channels uh, on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, all those things, sponsors of podcasts and video casts can get their messages out extremely effectively to thousands, if not, you know, frankly, sometimes millions of people. In crypto, it's gonna be hard to get it out to millions of different people because there's not probably millions of different people really watching the different crypto channels it's maybe a million or two if you're lucky watching all the different channels combined you know they watch more than one or two so the numbers add up for a bunch of channels but it's still a very small community which means you can still get on very cost effectively like the biggest channels only still have like a couple hundred thousand a few hundred thousand you know um and that's relatively cheap in the world of marketing for podcasts and video casts because right? there's channels with tens of millions of people, even more, over 100 million people. That's quite costly and also not effective for you if you're marketing crypto or blockchain right now, most likely, unless you're literally marketing like Ethereum and, or, you know, something huge, um, XRP, and, or, you know, some, or some one of the top 10 projects, let's give it to you, <laughs> one of the top 10 real projects. Um, you know, but if you're not one of the top 10 real projects, you really want to focus more on podcasts and video casts they will be more effective for you uh that are and that are niche podcasts and video casts right they'll be much more effective for you you'll get to focus on an audience that's actually interested in a specific topic you're talking about on their show and as specific as you can the better to be perfectly honest let them get a really specific thumbnail and title out of it that's a whiz bang one don't go just for the big you know, crypto price keyword or something or Bitcoin crashes or, you know, don't, you know, 
go for something actually specific and useful in a topic you're talking about. Maybe it's um, explaining how nodes work on your crypto, or maybe it's explaining the difference between uh, proof of work and proof of stake or whatever system you actually use. You know, maybe it's explain your algorithm um, in layman's terms. Maybe it's um, do an explanation of your white paper or a read through that explains things and answers questions. There's tons of ways you can give interesting content uh, on on podcasts and videocasts, and they love it, right? There's nothing more these guys want than you come to them with a juicy piece of content that they can just literally splice into their video and hit, you know, save and play, or just play on a stream. Um, so do that. Sponsor podcasts and videocasts if you have the budget for it, but make sure they're relevant, highly relevant to your specific crypto and niche. If they are, they can be a gold mine. If not, you just you're you know, blowing money. And unless you're McDonald's and you have money to blow on branding, even if you know it's going to cost you a loss, then don't do it. You know, Be effective with your cash flow. Okay. Number two, crypto marketing services. So like my own marketing agency, right? We do crypto marketing. We're a crypto marketing agency, we're a blockchain marketing agency, we're a digital marketing agency, we market all kinds of things, right? We even, frankly, market some offside stuff, but we focus a lot and mostly on crypto, blockchain, and other some other digital marketing. But crypto and blockchain marketing, right? And there's a few other decent or great crypto marketing services out there that let you do similar things. Uh, usually you have to get them from different agencies, etc. Not everybody does everything. Uh, very few people do kind of turnkey solutions, but, you know, the ones that do, the good ones give good results. And the point is, as a marketer, you can outsource some of your work, right, to crypto marketing services, whether you're using, you know, freelance web marketplaces where you can find freelancers willing to do stuff for cheap prices or whether you're coming to, you know, an agency like mine uh, or whether you're going to, you know, you're trying to hire somebody internally to bring on part-time or maybe full-time, or maybe you have a team and you want to increase your team, right? Crypto marketing services involves hiring not just bots, but also people, right? You need to, you need to uh, include more human intelligence in the process. Yes, automation is super useful, and it is one of the main crypto marketing services you should be employing for a lot of your funnel process, of course, right? You can be automating everything from the hello, welcome chat to the, you know, goodbye email, right? Uh, after they've been a client for years. Um, but in most cases, clients and prospective clients will want more human information, right? The information from humans. They want more information if they're interested in your product. They want to reach out and hear back from someone and know that if they have to reach out in the future, they can reliably count on hearing back from somebody in a given amount of time, right? That is assured or somehow otherwise very, very consistent and reliable. Um, so that's something to always keep in mind. You should be outsourcing as much of your work as possible, especially marketing. Because with marketing, yes, you can do a great job internally, but the more hands on deck you have distributed around the world, just like Bitcoin, the more decentralized your work is, just like Bitcoin, the more value your marketing work has. Just like Bitcoin has a greater impact, the more decentralized it is and the more people around the world use it. Why? Well, because then it gets distributed more organically by different people around a bigger network and networks, right, that aren't necessarily even connected, that are disparate, but still raising the noise. And eventually when they connect, there'll be so much momentum that you get a huge spiral growth out of it, right? So you want to exploit the ability of crypto marketing services, whether it's mine or anyone else's, just do it. Uh, of course, if you have any questions about it, ask me, I'll be happy to answer them and point you in the right, in the right direction if we're not the right agency, right? Where if you have, you know, well, anyway, by all means, ask us questions, contact, you know, contact my agency if you have questions about how to do crypto or blockchain marketing and how to use those services. And we'll be happy to let you know that whether you're a client or not, right? We're not going to hit you hard to buy, right? We might offer it to you, but we're definitely not going to be pushy about it. So feel free to contact us. Okay. And, um, and yeah, and by all means, just remember, 
outsource as much crypto marketing services as you can because the reward, the upside is huge and the risk of not doing it is losing the land grab to your competitors who are doing it. They are spending tens of thousands or more, hundreds of thousands or more trying to get the word out about their crypto. Right? If you're not doing that and you're competing with them, you better have another plan that can. Right? And if you don't have another plan that can, then you better be doing this. So do it. <laughs> All right. And the number one pro crypto marketing tip I have for you today is crypto shops and blockchain e-commerce. It's very simple, right? There's websites, there's blockchain shopping center, there's, uh, there's, there's purse, right? There's no shortage. There's hundreds of sites. I mean, okay, some will say, yeah, there were more Bitcoin sites or sites that accepted Bitcoin a few years ago. Now there's less because, you know, the all-time highs and all that stuff and the bubble popped and this and that. And, you know, fewer sites want to accept crypto now because it's too volatile. It's not a good coin to work with and it's going to slow down your orders and it's bad for this and it's bad for that. That may all be true. But here's the thing. If you don't start accepting cryptocurrency as a form of payment, right, you're going to have trouble getting more people to do it later, right? So it's better to have at least something, some way for people to use crypto, even if it's you accept it only as fiat, or even if it's you accept it as crypto and you immediately convert it as fiat, or maybe you believe in your crypto and you just accept the crypto and you hold it, right? But get your crypto on, if you, if you have a, if you are, if your crypto is related to an e-commerce platform that you control, make sure you have your crypto on your own e-commerce platform and make sure that you get your crypto on as many other crypto shops and blockchain e-commerce websites and applications as you possibly can, right? Uh, because that will expose you again, once again, to some of the most active people in the space, the eager beavers, the early adapters, the early adopters, the bleeding edge of cryptocurrency, right? people spending money on crypto products and merchandise and services and goods and all that stuff right there on the web, on the internet, wherever they are. There's sites where people buy stuff with crypto, right? Not just the dark web. There's plenty of nice websites where you can go and buy things with crypto. So as a marketer, you should be marketing on those sites. Something, a product doesn't matter what, something, put something on there um, or advertise on there, right? Just like you would on a media site, just like you would on a dev community, just like you would on a podcast, advertise there on their e-commerce site, put up products for sale that link back to you, that link back to your product and that accept, you know, and if they accept your crypto, even better, right? Sell props of your coin, just like you have those Bitcoin props, Ethereum coin props, XRP coin props. Make your own prop. Sell it. Why? Because collectors like that stuff. And then you can sell them on your website. And you can let people buy them in order to support your crypto. right? And they can even get some of the crypto in addition to the coin. And there's all these other upsells you can do. So use the crypto shops as a huge opportunity. Both for advertising and for marketing your cryptocurrency or blockchain project. Right? Even more so if that site is your project. Right? But even, you know, even if not, use crypto shops and blockchain e-commerce sites. While they may be small, while they may be far and few in between still compared to the rest of the web and what the rest of the web offers and what apps offer, it's a growing base. If, you're, if we're in the web 1994, this is an opportune time for you. Even if we're in the web 1995, this is an opportune time for you, right? To jump on board, be an early adopter and reap massive rewards with the right marketing. So there you go. There you have it. That's going to do it for now. It's a little bit longer than I wanted, to be honest, a lot longer. But hey, you know what? I really don't make these videos for clicks, likes, comments, or subscribes, or shares, or anything like that. Of course, if you want to, by all means, hey, thanks. But if not, that's fine too. I just make this stuff to get it out there, and I hope it's useful to you. If you're doing anything in the space, and if you're, especially if you're a marketer doing anything with crypto or blockchain, so if that is good for you, I hope it's been useful for you and good for you and that it's worthwhile. And if it is, hey, then tell everyone about it. Go to the rooftop and shout it out on your favorite blockchain syndicator or whatever. Um, 
So that's going to do it for now. Thanks again for listening to Crypto Marketing Insights with me, your host, Yasha Harari. And until next time, folks, take care.